It kickstarted some careers and destroyed others. If you choose to appear nude in a film, results may vary. For better or worse, the film adaptations of the erotic romance book series Fifty Shades of Grey gained mainstream popularity, unlike any film of its nature before. The film's overtly sexual content was ripe for controversy and intrigue, and the entire trilogy ultimately made more than $1 billion at the worldwide box office. Fifty Shades of Grey stars Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan skyrocketed in fame overnight, with a press tour full of uncomfortable conversations and bad innuendos. As daughter to actors Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith, Dakota Dakota Johnson was no stranger to the industry. She began making a name for herself with minor roles in movies like The Social Network and 21 Jump Street, but her breakout role in Fifty Shades of Grey accelerated her career. She told Vanity Fair, "...I'm a sexual person, and when I'm interested in something I want to know so much about it, that's why I did those big naked movies." Today, she's known for her roles in The Lost Daughter and Netflix's Persuasion, and is heading her own production company, Tea Time Pictures. Looking back at Fifty Shades Now, Johnson elaborated that she doesn't regret taking on the role. Irish actor Jamie Dornan shares a sentiment similar to Dakota Johnson's regarding the notorious movies that brought them international recognition. Before Fifty Shades of Grey even hit theaters, Dornan was already being addressed by his character name, Christian Grey, in real life. What would I get out of this? Speaking to Deadline, Dornan admitted that even years later he still struggles with being recognized as the character to this day. The actor has since done his best to separate himself from the franchise, starring in well-received films such as A Private War and Belfast, but he doesn't discount what the movies have done for his career. Speaking to British GQ, he explained, "...the thing is, every move I have made in my career post those films I have only been able to do because of those films." As true as that statement may be, it's up to the individual as to whether or not Dornan will forever owe the Fifty Shades fanbase for his success. No matter what Sydney Sweeney does, the conversation always comes back to her body, and it seems everyone has an opinion on what the young breakout star chooses to do with it. The hot topic first gained traction with her role as troubled teen Cassie Howard in the HBO series Euphoria, which frequently features scenes where the actor is nude. Although Sweeney has repeatedly expressed feeling comfortable on set and liberated by Cassie's sexual nature, viewers have criticized the show and its creator Sam Levinson for portraying unnecessary nudity of an underage character. No matter your opinion on the subject, Sweeney remains firm in her belief that she's in control, telling The Independent, "...I'm very proud of my work in Euphoria. I thought it was a great performance, but no one talks about it because I got naked." Euphoria won't be the last project for which Sweeney participates in a nude scene. While the actor explained to People that she wishes that appearing nude on screen wouldn't immediately brand her as a, quote, sex symbol, she also shared with The Hollywood Reporter that she had no intention to stop performing nude as the need arises. Perhaps Sweeney's confident approach to filming nude will help the TV and film industry begin to have more open and respectful conversations around the subject. Despite its critical acclaim, the HBO series Game of Thrones has become infamous for its heavy-handed depictions of nudity, sex, and violence, particularly against female characters. One of those characters was played by Natalie Emmanuel, who joined the cast as Missande, one of Daenerys Targaryen's most loyal subjects in season 3. By season 7, she became one of the many actors who appeared nude on screen during an intimate moment with co-star Jacob Anderson. What happened? Many things. Many things. Emmanuel told Entertainment Weekly that she found being so vulnerable on screen to be quite a challenge. Emmanuel's character was generally well received by viewers until her graphic death in season 8, which was heavily criticized in terms of imagery and plot development. Even so, her acting career took off in the following years as she landed roles in the Maze Runner and Fast and Furious franchises. However, her time on Game of Thrones has led to assumptions that she's open to doing nude scenes in other shows. On the Rain with Josh Smith podcast, she explained, "...I've had people challenge me and be like, but this part requires that, and I said, that's fine if you require that in the part, I don't feel comfortable doing that level of nudity." Luckily, it seems that people have been respectful of that boundary more often than not. When Amelia Clark took on the role of Daenerys in Game of Thrones, her life changed forever. In addition to quickly gaining worldwide recognition, she became one of the highest-paid actors on television and received multiple award nominations all within a few short years. However, only 23 years old at the time and still early in her career, Clark felt blindsided by the nudity required from her for the show. Speaking to Dax Shepard on the Armchair Expert podcast, she explained that she'd only been on film sets a handful of times before she started filming Game of Thrones, so being naked in such a crowded environment was quite an adjustment for her. 
Eventually, however, Clark learned to stand up for herself and become more comfortable performing in nude scenes. She explained that as the show progressed, she felt more confident standing up for her own privacy. Clark has had no problem securing jobs since Game of Thrones and has even had to be picky with which roles she accepts. When Fifty Shades of Grey came knocking at her door with an offer to play the leading role, Clark told The Hollywood Reporter she turned it down without regrets as she didn't want another intensely nude role to affect how the public saw her career. When you think of Meg Ryan, it's likely that her widely successful romantic comedies come to mind. Whether she meant to or not, throughout the 1990s, Ryan crafted a light-hearted good girl image for herself, with roles in films like When Harry Met Sally, Sleepless in Seattle, and You've Got Mail. However, in 2003, Ryan starred in a film unlike anything she'd done before, completely polarizing her fans in the process. In Jane Campion's erotic thriller In the Cut, Ryan received such an adverse reaction to performing a graphic nude scene that it ended up being an unexpected turning point in the actor's career. Despite some backlash from viewers, Ryan told The New York Times she had a great time filming the movie, but was unsure how to proceed with the public's response. She explained, "...sexuality in Hollywood is so complex. I don't know if it was brave or cowardly of me to sort of bob and weave around the issue." Ryan stepped out of the limelight for a few years before returning for a series of independent films, following them up with a directorial debut in 2015. However, she told The New York Times that her separation from Hollywood was mutual. She now spends her time traveling, writing, designing, and taking pictures. Halle Berry's career quickly took off in the 90s with her 1991 film debut in Spike Lee's Jungle Fever. Just eight years later, she received critical acclaim for her performance in the HBO biopic Introducing Dorothy Dandridge, which gave her the confidence to take more risks. In 2001, her first-ever topless scene in the movie Swordfish made headlines, although Barry claims the rumors that she received an extra $500,000 for the scene is false. Speaking with Cinema.com, she explained that she chose to do the scene because it asserted her character's independence and control over her own body. In the face of all the scrutiny she received, Barry didn't waver and even went a step further in her next film, Monster's Ball, by appearing completely nude during a love scene. Again, her nudity was met with controversy, but her performance ultimately paid off when she became the first woman of color to win the Academy Award for Best Actress. Curiously, her co-star Billy Bob Thornton did not experience the same level of scrutiny over his body's presentation in the film. There seems to be a theme of attractive women exclusively getting the short end of the stick when it comes to the public's response to their nudity. Since the Barbie movie crossed the $1 billion threshold at the worldwide box office, there's been no escaping Margot Robbie's star power. However, it wasn't long ago at all that Robbie was first getting her start on the Australian soap opera Neighbors. Her big break came in 2013 when she appeared in Martin Scorsese's The Wolf of Wall Street as Jordan Belfort's wife, Naomi. The film was the world's introduction to Robbie, and she made quite the impression. Although the famous love scene between the two co-stars, in which Robbie appears nude, did plenty to capture the audience's attention, it was Robbie's performance that secured her ticket to mainstream success. We're not gonna be friends. Initially, performing nude didn't come naturally to Robbie. However, she told The New York Times that knocking back a couple of tequila shots helped get her in the right headspace to film. Today, showing some skin doesn't phase her as much, as she told Vanity Fair, I don't really have a whole lot of modesty left. Perhaps Robbie's career is proof that actors are better off bearing it all from the beginning. That way, there's nothing else left to hide. Few nude scenes are as iconic as the one in which Kate Winslet's Rose poses for Leonardo DiCaprio's Jack for a painting in James Cameron's Titanic. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. The iconic scene was actually the first thing Winslet and DiCaprio filmed together, making for an awkward experience. However, it was the public's response that really did the most damage. Winslet recalled to The Guardian that her physical appearance and weight were the subject of a lot of scrutiny, and throughout her 20s, she was often asked to comment on her body in interviews. Along with being thrust into the spotlight, Winslet holds some negative memories from this early time in her career. To her horror, fans continue to present photos from the scene for Winslet to autograph, which she respectfully declines. Since Titanic, Winslet has appeared in several nude scenes in films like The Reader, Revolutionary Road, Little Children, and Lee. However, more than two decades later, the actor continues to deal with body shaming, and she's not shy about how hard she works to maintain her confidence in the process, she told Vogue. People amongst our own team would say, you might just want to sit up a bit. And I'd go, why? Because of the bit of flesh you can see? No, that's the way it's going to be. Evidently, Winslet has relied on no one but herself for the confidence that solidified her as one of the top actors of her generation. 
Helen Mirren is a highly decorated actor who began her career in theater and film in the late 1960s and cemented her icon status with critically acclaimed hit films like 1980's The Long Good Friday. However, before her breakout roles in films like The Queen and series like Elizabeth I and Prime Suspect, she was reluctantly viewed as a sex symbol. As Mirren recalled to the Daily Mail, though she lived through the supposedly revolutionary 1960s, she found men were still largely in charge of the film industry. As a result, Mirren was put into a lot of uncomfortable positions, she explained. Looking back, liberation did involve a lot of exploitation. I didn't enjoy those scenes, but I felt it was important for me to push myself out of my comfort zones. After her role in the sexually explicit film Caligula, the press, the industry, and the rest of the public were under the impression that nothing was off-limits, including the sexualization of Mirren outside of her character. One called her an amorous boa constrictor. Others have called her sensual, graceful. Later in her interview with the Daily Mail, Mirren credited writer Linda LaPlante with her liberation from those misogynist labels, as she was the one to come up with her fully fleshed-out character of DCI Jane Tennyson in Prime Suspect. If you haven't kept up with Daniel Radcliffe's career since his years portraying the boy who lived in the Harry Potter film series, you may find his addition to this list surprising. However, in an attempt to break out of the Harry Potter mold, Radcliffe has spent the last decade taking on drastically different roles, which have included a fair amount of nudity on both stage and screen. From Radcliffe's perspective, the constant nudity isn't exactly a conscious career choice. He explained to The Guardian that it just happened to work out that many of the roles that interested him have required some degree of nudity. Radcliffe is well aware of the reputation he's crafting, and he isn't exactly thrilled about it. When it came to a discussion about a potential nude scene in the series A Young Doctor's Notebook, Radcliffe pushed back, noting that he'd appeared nude in three different projects the year before filming the show. As Radcliffe put it to the publication, at some point, everyone's going to start assuming I'm an exhibitionist. As an Italian-Australian actor trying to get work in Hollywood in the late 80s and early 90s, Greta Scacchi says going nude was the only way to make it in the industry for fear of being labeled as hard to work with otherwise. Thus, her nude scenes in films like Heat and Dust, White Mischief, and Shattered became a part of her identity as an actor, though navigating the environment on film sets proved problematic. Speaking to the Daily Mail, she recalled one conflict she experienced with director Robert Altman while filming The Player. She explained how he had assured her she would not have to film nude for the movie. But when the day came to shoot her love scene with Tim Robbins, he insisted that she did. She continued to refuse, so they had to film the scene from the neck up to appease her wishes. Though she's now in her 60s, the promiscuous reputation still followed Skaki for years. While no one asks her to film nude these days, she's struggled for years not to be, quote, pigeonholed into a particular style of acting. Rather than large amounts of money or fame, Skaki's years of experience gave her the confidence and freedom to turn down lucrative work she deemed unnecessarily exploitative, including the lead role in the erotic thriller Basic Instinct that ultimately went to Sharon Stone. For her part, Sharon Stone is well aware of what the role of Catherine Trammell in Basic Instinct did for her and her career. As she reflected in Vanity Fair in 2021, "...it's about more than just a peek up my skirt, people. Wake up! Women championed that movie. Men were obsessed with a woman who could make it stop. She was their favorite, but now, only now do I go to events and there is a certain respect about that film." Despite the film's legacy, the only thing many viewers talked about was the scene where Stone spreads her legs. While shooting, Stone was told her private area was not visible, but she needed to remove her underwear regardless. During a viewing of the movie, Stone discovered she was lied to. She ultimately decided to keep the scene in, as she felt it was the right choice for both her character and the movie as a whole. This was only one instance of many that Stone has had to put up with in her career. In her Vanity Fair article, Stone lists her multiple encounters with harassment, from one director who demanded Stone sit on his lap to another shaming her and her mother when Stone refused to act out a degrading scene. Still, she persisted, writing in the publication that she worked hard to ensure these challenges were not in vain. Since becoming a mother in 2014, Ava Mendez has taken a step out of the acting spotlight, with her last film role being Ryan Gosling's directorial debut, Lost River. As she was getting her start, however, her looks were a hot topic among many. Perhaps her brief semi-nude scenes in her breakout film Training Day gave people the impression that Mendez was satisfied with being regarded as a sex symbol. Regardless, she started getting a lot of attention after Training Day came out. Mendez told The Sun that she feels capable of exuding sexuality while acting in roles like that, but she does not see it as her only talent. 
She explained, I know I can do the kind of work where people are going to recognize me just as much for my determination and sensitivity and humor as for being sexy. Ultimately, Mendez hasn't let the scrutiny discourage her, and she's managed to make a name for herself in both comedic and dramatic projects for well over a decade. No male Hollywood actor has spent more time nude on screen than Ewan McGregor, appearing full frontal on multiple occasions since his claim to fame in 1996's Trainspotting. As far as McGregor is concerned, it's not as big of a deal as everyone makes it out to be, and he's fine with doing it if it makes sense. However, he told The Telegraph that on multiple occasions he's refused to go completely nude if he didn't see it as necessary for a given scene. Whether he's flashing his member in Velvet Goldmine or pantsless on the toilet in Trainspotting, his nude scenes are almost always memorable. However, most of his record-breaking on-screen nudity comes from the 1996 erotic drama The Pillow Book, in which McGregor plays an English translator sent to Japan who spends most of the movie without clothing. Since reaching the age of 40 in 2011, McGregor has been trying to shake off his nudist reputation by swearing off explicit scenes altogether, especially with younger actresses. While the actor holds no regrets toward his past nude scenes, he told Express that he wants to ensure that any women he acts with feel comfortable and respected on set. While one might assume that having two parents well-versed in the entertainment industry would have protected a young Angelina Jolie from the exploitation often prevalent in Hollywood, that unfortunately wasn't the case when she was cast in Cyborg 2 at the age of 17. When casting a minor, certain rules and regulations are put into place for a reason. But according to Hollywood Gothic, director Michael Schroeder worked hard to circumvent these rules. To realize his vision for the film, the director even convinced Jolie to emancipate herself. Despite these many red flags, Jolie did end up performing nude for a scene in the film. Sadly, when she saw the finished product for the first time, it made her sick. This experience didn't deter Jolie from later appearing nude in movies like The Good Shepherd, Foxfire, Taking Lives, Gia, Original Sin, and By the Sea. However, since her double mastectomy, Jolie admitted to being more reluctant. Like most actors who have performed nude, Jolie will now only disrobe when the story truly calls for it. Throughout her formative years, Brooke Shields faced some of the greatest injustices in the history of the entertainment industry. Her mother began booking her modeling gigs when she was only 11 months old. By age 11, she was appearing nude in her big break film, Pretty Baby, in which she played a 12-year-old sex worker. They say that on the set you felt very uncomfortable during all this. Is that true? Well, I mean, I knew it was going to be in good, done in good taste. Two years later, she found herself subjected to further sexualization through nude scenes in The Blue Lagoon. This mistreatment continued as she got older. While filming a sex scene in Endless Love at age 16, director Franco Zeffirelli even physically hurt Shields to get the look of ecstasy he wanted from the actor. Between these movies and her explicit modeling ads, Shields was propped up as a child sex symbol. In an interview on her Hulu documentary, Pretty Baby, Brooke Shields, she reflected that she's surprised she lived through so many intense experiences at such a young age. As horrific as her upbringing sounds, Shields doesn't think of herself as being exploited. She has a very practical outlook on her career, telling The New Yorker, I can't be a hypocrite and, on the one hand, say I'm going to sell your stuff and then put it down or say, oh, I'm being used. Either do it or don't do it. You're making money and, in most cases, sex sells. French actor Ava Green made her film debut in Bernardo Bertolucci's The Dreamers and was instantly on everyone's radar. In the film, Green plays a provocative twin who spends most of the runtime engaging in sexual acts and appearing nude. Although The Dreamers has been credited as having kick-started her career, those close to her weren't too happy with her decision to star in the film. Green told The Guardian that her parents and agent were concerned she would suffer the same injustices as Maria Schneider, who accused Bertolucci of exploiting her in the sexually explicit Last Tango in Paris. Despite the warnings and the frequent nudity, Green was eager to do the film. She explained to Vulture, I was like, I don't care. I loved the story. I thought it was just a really beautiful love story between three people. Boobs have never killed anyone. However, she went on to describe feeling shocked after watching the completed film and has refused to revisit any of her work ever since. The Dreamers wasn't the last time she appeared nude on screen, but Green is more particular now about taking off her clothes. When it came to her role in the 2006 James Bond film Casino Royale, Green fought against a nude scene that would have felt out of place. Luckily, she has avoided being typecast throughout her career, taking on plenty of diverse roles since. In the 90s, Elizabeth Berkley was known for her role as the high-achieving, well-intentioned Jessie Spano in the sitcom Saved by the Bell. However, when she left the show to expand her career into film, her big-screen debut generated unexpected controversy. 
In 1995's Showgirls, Berkeley plays an aspiring Vegas showgirl and performs several sex and nude scenes. The big-budget film was the first of its kind to receive an NC-17 rating in the United States and faced harsh condemnation from critics. The transition from teen sitcom to erotic drama proved too jarring for audiences, and many attacked Berkeley for trying too hard to revamp her image. Twenty years later, director Paul Verhoeven came forward to apologize for ruining Berkeley's career. Speaking to the New York Post, he took full responsibility for marring the young actor's reputation. During an anniversary screening of the film in Los Angeles, Berkeley reflected on her experience, saying, I had the most extraordinary experience making the film, which is why, when the movie came out, it was more painful than anything you can imagine. She expanded that in the mid-90s, the public was much less progressive towards celebrities taking huge creative risks the way Berkeley did. And being the subject of such ridicule at such a young age was very challenging. In season one of HBO's True Detective, Alexandra Daddario plays the role of a court stenographer who has an affair with Woody Harrelson's detective Martin Marty Hart. In one now-famous scene from the second episode, Seeing Things, Daddario's character Lisa undresses during an intimate moment with Marty. It's a turning point for the show, but Daddario didn't expect much to come of it for her, as she told Collider she did not find her role in the series particularly major. To Daddario's surprise, however, it was one of the best things she could have done for her career. The actor recalled, My manager calls me in the morning after the episode aired, and she was like, the phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. The phone won't stop ringing, and all of a sudden everyone in town wanted to meet with me. Daddario revealed that it was the result of this newfound attention that she booked another major project from her filmography, the role of Blake in 2015's San Andreas. Although she wasn't expecting all the attention, Daddario feels gratitude for the opportunity and has expanded into lead roles on series like The White Lotus and Mayfair Witches.